As the title of the video suggests, I've been having a little bit of an existential crisis about my relationship to Haruki Murakami lately. He's an author I've held in high regard for years, and someone who I've recommended to people consistently since I started reading him. But lately, when I think about my own feelings towards him, I'm not sure that I have the same passion for his work that I used to. The Wind Up Bird Chronicle is the book that I credit to renewing my interest and love of reading in my early 20s. I'd gone through a rough patch and decided that starting up a reading habit would be beneficial for my brain, and my friend recommended me Wind Up Bird as a way to get excited about books again. I ended up finishing the book in about a week and was blown away by Murakami's writing style. As anyone who's read his stuff will know, it has a hypnotic quality that slowly and methodically draws you into his world, impressively so given how plain his language can be. All the goings-on in his books, save for a couple of the more grounded ones, happen in ways that make sense about 85% of the time, with the rest of the action only resembling reality in the way that dreams make sense when you're in them, but when you wake up you realize the wonkiness of everything. To be clear, everything I've just described is what makes Murakami's writing great. His ability to make stories fairly bereft of plot as engaging as he does is nothing short of a miracle, and he's done it so many times that he's far beyond a proven master at his craft. With that said, much like watching the bands you loved as a teenager grow old, the mystique and allure of Murakami's writing started to wane for me in the past several years. I started reading Murakami in late 2015, and by the time his next major release came around, I had caught up on all of his previous novels, seeing how his writing and style had evolved over the years. When Killing Commendatore came out in 2018, I went down to the bookstore and bought it first thing in the morning, in a way reliving what it felt like to buy the newest Harry Potter book when I was a kid. There wasn't a line full of excited fans, but it felt special for me nonetheless. It took me a couple of weeks to get through the book, and by the end of it I had a number of mixed feelings about the thing. There's a novelty to reading a brand new release by your favorite author, or listening to a brand new album by your favorite band. I feel like I'm predisposed to liking the project or the novel a little more than had it been something from the artist's back catalog that I was visiting for the first time. There's something about the newness that's exciting. And the idea of recommending it to a friend soon after is a little bit of a power trip too. With that said, putting the newness of Killing Commendatore aside, I would be lying if I said it didn't quite live up to my expectations. Looking back at it now, it's by no means a bad book, and I wouldn't call it a failure by any measure. But at its core, it suffers from what I would call playing the hits syndrome. There's a popular meme passed around Murakami fan groups online, showing a bingo card for Haruki Murakami, each square illustrating a trope or recurring theme from his books. The reason the bingo card is so popular is because it's so true, and reading Killing Commendatore completely reinforced that sentiment for me. An artist revisiting themes from their prior works isn't a bad thing, and it's not even an uncommon occurrence. You can take a look at the filmographies of Martin Scorsese, Paul Schrader, or even Guillermo del Toro and see that there are through lines that exist across their entire careers as filmmakers. Odds are your favorite band has some albums that sound pretty similar to each other, like comparing Is This It to Room on Fire. Not exactly the same, but playing in the same sandbox as the other. There's nothing wrong with an artist doing what they do best, or creating art from a place of familiarity and personal interest. I'm not expecting Murakami to, all of a sudden, 40 years into his career, turn out some incredible space opera novel, or a pure romance without any of his trademark quirks. With that said, I feel that he's gone back to the well a few too many times, and there's starting to be diminishing returns. Killing Commendatory, in a lot of ways, feels like his attempt at a spiritual sequel to Wind Up Bird Chronicle, or at least a fraternal twin. There's a hole in the ground, historical tangents, a young girl that the main character becomes friends with, and a climactic moment existing in a realm between reality and unreality. It hits all the same beats, and the surrounding details are different enough to let it stand on its own. But is it as good as Wind Up Bird Chronicle? Absolutely not. Would I have preferred him to focus his efforts on something more original? Yes, 100%. Am I glad the book exists anyway? Also yes. The more Murakami content, the merrier, as far as I'm concerned. In the years since Killing Commendatory, Murakami has published a short story collection, a book about his favorite t-shirts, and a non-fiction work on his experience being a professional writer. There's also been numerous special editions of his older works, including the Sweet Folio Society edition of Kafka on the Shore that I have sitting on my shelf. There's no news of an imminent novel, at least at the time of this video. And at his age, we must consider the possibility that there's not another one coming. As far as I'm concerned, I think he's entered the same territory as a band like the Rolling Stones. Nothing left to prove, but still profitable and beloved by his loyal fans. And honestly, what more can we really ask of him? How many masterpieces can a single person churn out, especially at his age? Not everyone has a black star in them like David Bowie. Maybe I'm wrong and Haruki will pull something out of him that will set my brain on fire. 
but if he doesn't, I have no complaints. The other factor here is that since I started reading Murakami, and really since I started my journey as a reading adult, I've gone on to read so many other great novels and short story collections, and my tastes have changed over time. Murakami is great at what he does, but could he have written The Three Body Problem? Or Station Eleven? No. Expanding one's palette is a great idea for me or for anyone else, and in the process of doing so, I've discovered stories that have resonated so deeply with me in ways that Murakami never has. For all of the atmosphere that Murakami creates, there's sometimes a lack of emotional depth to his work. And when there is emotional depth, it's often masked by all the surrealism and unreality that his stories are couched in. Not to say that Norwegian Wood or South of the Border aren't valid as emotionally harrowing pieces of literature, but when I compare them to what Ken Liu is able to accomplish in a fraction of the runtime in his short stories, Murakami's luster wanes for me. One of the nicer aspects of being a Murakami fan is the online fan community that I mentioned earlier, in that being a part of the community has turned me on to other authors that exist in the same artistic realm as him. Without talking to people about Murakami, I would have never read any Banana Yoshimoto or Woman in the Dunes by Kobo Abe, and my general appetite and appreciation for this type of slow, surreal fiction wouldn't exist. Haruki Murakami is a legend, and his fanbase is often adamant about his greatness, most notably whenever the Nobel Prize for Literature comes around, clamoring for his long overdue moment of triumph, winning the big prize after so many years of being shut out. This type of weird celebrity worship and advocacy is, in my view, pointless and sort of embarrassing. In reality, I think his fans care more about the award than he does, and if for some reason he finally did receive the award, what would that really add to his legacy? Propping him up as some sort of idol or genius figure isn't something I'm interested in, for him or anyone else, and I think approaching fandom like this is detrimental and narrow-minded to say the least. But the world of art and literature is too vast a place to get stuck ruminating about him for the rest of my life. I don't foresee myself making any more Murakami content for the channel anytime soon, even though without a doubt the videos I've made about him bring in more views than anything else I've made. But much like my reading habits, I'd like to branch out a bit, with or without my audience sticking around. I hope you will anyway. Thanks.